and welcome. It's Mary Ellen McGonigal here with your Friday afternoon MEM Edge show. And as always, this is the show where we bring you where the action is in the broader markets. We did hit that record 5,000 in the S&P 500, and otherwise the markets are in the green. We're going to take a look at what's driving price action this week. And as always, share with you where that relative outperformance is. You want to be aware of that so that in the end, you can participate and capitalize on that relative outperformance. And really, it's there and taking place for a very sound reason. We'll get into that as we move through today's show. As always, let's take a look at some of those items that drove price action last week. Quite frankly, it was a very light calendar for economic data. However, there were other drivers and most notable, certainly earlier in the week, were the number of Federal Reserve officials that were speaking publicly. And for the most part, the announcements and comments were very similar relating to no real need for a cut in interest rates anytime soon. In turn, interest rates have remained elevated. We'll take a look at that yield on the 10-year. But the other big driver continues to be earnings. We're seeing companies come out with good numbers, but most importantly, those companies that are really talking about continued growth and guiding those estimates higher into this remainder of the year. So that is certainly one reason that certain areas are outperforming. And then also next week, very important to know that we have some key inflation data, core CPI and core PPI data will be released. That might be create a little bit of rockiness. We will see, of course. But for now, let's go ahead and take a look at the markets and see where did we close for the week. And here we are with a daily price chart of the S&P 500. We talked about that critical number, 5,000, a move above that did seemingly bring excitement to the markets today. And overall, we do remain above each of these shorter term, simple moving averages, your RSI and MACD, both in positive territory and trending higher. Therefore, your near term uptrend is firmly in place. Now, of course, from here, I like to take a look at those 11 underlying sectors within the S&P 500. And we're looking at a two-month daily price chart view. This is the candle glance feature on stockcharts.com. And there is an ability to add an indicator. For my work, I'm going to add that RSI relative strength indicator, and then sort the sectors in descending order. And this type of view, if you look at it regularly, can be really quite powerful and helping you spot sector rotation. You're on the lookout for sectors down in this weaker quartile to begin to advance up to the forefront. And then likewise, stronger areas, if they begin to exhibit weakness, you want to be aware of that as well. So let's take a look up here at the forefront is healthcare. This is an area that did not outperform this week, but you can see that it has had this really healthy period of outperformance. Certainly last week, we have positive momentum taking place here. As we move through, I'll share with you some of the areas in healthcare that are giving that boost to the sector. And then take a look. Technology, which last week had been languishing in this middle quartile, is back in front and center. It was the top performer up 2.8%. I'll share with you the industry groups that drove tech higher. And we can see that we have now hit a new high in this sector. So from here, we're going to take a look at some of these other areas. I did write an article. You can access it here last Friday, all about healthcare and industrials, the move into these two areas. And here we are, XLI, up a little bit less than the S&P. This is the industrial sector, but still remaining in an uptrend. Any of these sectors that are migrating up to this healthier, stronger quartile, it is earnings-driven. 
that has been the big reason for areas that are outperforming. It's going to be due to underlying stocks that are coming in with good numbers and guiding higher. Let's take a look at another sector that outperformed this week. This is consumer discretionary XLY up one and a half percent. And it was not due to, for instance, Amazon or other big cap names. Tesla actually came through today. We'll take a look at that chart as we move through because I want to share with you, it's beginning to try and trend higher, not an area I would overweight, but certainly worth noting. And also within this consumer discretionary area, it's going to be earnings driven as well. And so I did want to share with you when you're looking at your dashboard on a daily basis in stockcharts.com, it can be really quite helpful on a daily basis. Take a look at the S&P 500, those names that are up the most on any given day, and you are on the lookout from there for themes, but we can see among retailers, Etsy on the move, attempting to reverse this downtrend here. If we can get up above that 200 day, simple moving average, but take a look, MACD poised to turn positive with a positive RSI. So let's get back to this sector view here because you do, of course, wanna be aware of where the weaker areas are. And we're down here with energy, real estate, and utilities down here languishing. Really, it's all about growth stocks this past week. So from here, let's go ahead and take a look at some of the industry groups beneath these sectors. Again, really fine tuning. You want to be in these areas that are up here in this relative outperformance quartile. And IGV, this is software ETF. You can see that we experienced a nice base breakout this week. Again, very much earnings driven. And I will share the other area within technology up here at the forefront. And that is semiconductors up five and a half percent. Now my weekly and actually twice weekly MEM Edge report, we are overweighted in tech and we are overweighted in semiconductor and software stocks. And the names that are on that suggested holdings list, I have about 20 stocks that are highlighted and they are really faring quite well. If you haven't already, go ahead and use the link below. You can trial the report for very nominal fee. You'll get immediate access to that list of select stocks that are on the move higher. So would highly recommend that. So moving through here, we talked about consumer discretionary. Let's take a look. This is XRT, the S&P 500 retail ETF. And I'm pointing this out because oftentimes you will see areas on the move and perhaps you don't have the time or the inclination to really dig in and see what is driving that particular industry higher, I would suggest simply purchasing the ETF. And I actually do own XRT. You can see this move above these moving averages as it is poised for a base breakout, a nice MACD crossover, and likewise with that RSI above 50 and trending higher. From here, we can take a look at some of the other areas. I talked about healthcare on the move higher. Here's IHI. Now I will tell you, it did underperform this week, but last week was really particularly strong. This is the medical devices, medical products area. And again, earnings driven. We are seeing new developments come out with new newer technologies that's driving some of the moves in that medical devices area. And of course, always taking a look here at that yield on the 10 year. And you can see it's not advancing in a manner similar to last fall, but inching higher. We are now at 4.187. And ideally, if we could see interest rates decline, we certainly will get more information with that inflation data next week, but that would provide even more confidence, primarily for those growth areas that are going to be more negatively impacted by a potentially rising interest rate environment. Last up, we're going to take a look at KRE. This is an area that has really struggled up late, the regional banking 
ETF. And this is on the heels of fears of those banks that have commercial real estate in their portfolios potentially suffering due to reduced demand. So we can see this drop here and the group attempting to reverse this downtrend. This is an area with my MEM Edge report. We did get in back here in December and we did remove those banking names as the group began to deteriorate and that RSI turned negative, which is obviously good news given the weakness that has since been experienced within that group. From here, I do want to share with you the fact that I'm talking about growth names, software, semiconductors, really, truly outperforming. But at the end of the week, we are seeing base breakouts in other areas. And this is pointing toward an eventual broadening out. We're not quite there yet. Let's go ahead over quickly here and I'll share with you the equal weighted S&P 500. And you'll see that it was up this week, but it was only up a half of a percent relative to the broader S&P, I'm sorry, the more focused S&P 500 up 1.3%. So that equal weighted is not telling us that that broadening out has strength. But from here, I will share with you names outside of technology that are exhibiting base breakouts. Before I do that, let's take a look at one of the bigger names or certainly the better performers among semiconductors last week. And this is monolithic power MPWR base breakout, super high volume and poised to potentially trade higher. Another, and that is on the heels of strong earnings. Another tech name on the move higher, not quite as dramatic, but this is Samsara IOT also relating to earnings. And you can see, actually, we're having an earthquake here in California right now, and it's um, okay. Hopefully, it subsides. Um, with IoT, we can see this black line coming up through the red. Nice crossover on that MACD, indicating a move into an uptrend. And both of these names are trending higher because of their involvement and their ability to benefit from the adoption of AI. So that is something I wanted to point out is the fact that AI really is, these companies are in a profitable position. They're monetizing because with MPWR, it is AI chip demand. So that's certainly one area I would urge you to uh, look into further if you haven't already or take a look at my MEM Edge report. So from here, let's take a look at some of these other base breakouts that took place. I found it to be really interesting as the week evolved that we were seeing this move into other areas. Now we're looking at a daily chart at an insurance company, KNSL. And for those of you not familiar, this is a cup with handle base breakout. I'll just take a minute here and mark that up because when you're looking for these, this is really one of the most powerful base formations when it breaks out. And in, when you're looking for that, you don't want that base formation to get up to that prior high. Generally speaking, about a third below that high is what you want to see. And a second smaller base known as the handle then forms and eventually what you're looking for is a break above the high of the left side of that handle. And we did experience that today. Not a whole lot of volume, but certainly exemplary of a cup with handle base breakout. Next up, we're going to look at an area that's kind of been a stealth mover, but lots of strength in this particular area. This is Powell Industries. And for those not familiar, this particular company does provide electrical equipment and the ability to monitor your electricity. And it, again, has been a very vibrant area and one of the areas in the industrial sector. I did talk about that again in that article. So if you are inclined, there is another name that had a big base breakout last week that uh, is 
performing quite well. But here we are with POWL. We can see that gap up when that occurs, another very strong pattern. You're going to be on the lookout for that high volume. And then we can see a nice continuation rally taking shape there. Also in that industrial area, we're seeing names such as FIX. This is Comfort Systems. They do a lot by way of heating and air systems, all about that nice move into, let's take a quick look at XHB. That is the Home Builders ETF that's continuing to trend higher despite those elevated interest rates. Nice base breakout. Take a look at that black line up through the red. Nice new uptrend taking place in those home builders. Again, if you're not inclined to dig in, you can always participate with those ETFs. Let's take a look at another company. Many of you may be familiar with this. It's RACE and it is Ferrari. And we can see the stock also exhibited a nice base breakout, super high volume. When that takes shape, I'm gonna go ahead and add an additional moving average here. And that is this blue five-day simple moving average. And oftentimes when we have that gap up, you'll see a period of what I call digestion, where the stock marks time and pulls back to that five-day that becomes the new area of support. Pullbacks to that moving average often become a buy point. And another good example, this is a stock that's been on my MEM Edge report, had a great week last week, Decker's D-E-C-K up about 18, 19% on that gap up and take a look pulling back to that five day simple moving average. And that's it for this week, everyone. I hope you have a fantastic weekend. If you like what you've seen, go ahead and hit that like button. And anyone with questions, leave them in the comments below. I'll be sure and address them next week. See you next Friday.